to get this effect, we're talking low doses of methylene blue. I don't recommend high doses of methylene blue. But when you combine it with this, you're working on two different axes that are really, really interesting for mitochondrial function and ultimately fatty acid utilization. It is awesome. You know, the difference between a performance enhancer that might be like this over-the-counter type thermogenic or pre-workout versus like something like an anabolic where it's like really having profound effects like in that category the difference is that like one is almost this superficial let's create more energy caffeine kind of thing and one is like really happening at a cellular almost like pharmacological level like deep deep stuff and when you start looking at how like methylene blue works for example methylene blue is definitely a solid performance enhancer you know no matter where you stand on it whether you like methylene blue or not it's allowing more atp more energy to be created so it's very very powerful in that respect the reason that i'm doing this video is because the sort of natural compound that can amplify methylene blue or work in somewhat of a synergistic way is spirulina. Now, I actually first a while ago heard Dave Asprey talking about spirulina as like sort of a natural alternative to methylene blue. And I know that's not what he meant, but I wanted to clarify a little bit more because it's not an alternative, but it is something that could work extremely well together because they actually work similar end results in some ways, but very different pathways. Methylene blue is what is called an electron donor and an electron carrier. So there's a redox reaction that occurs that ultimately allows it to make dysfunctional mitochondria, with which many of us have, 94% of the population, and allows those mitochondria to like work better to produce ATP. Spirulina, which I'm going to go into some serious depth with today, is more about allowing fuel to get into the cell better to ultimately be utilized. So let's go ahead and break it down a little bit more and teach you how you can use it because it really is interesting. And you know, you may not want to use methylene blue. You may want to use spirulina. You may want to just use methylene blue and not use spirulina, or you may want to use both. So let's dive in. After today's video, I put a link down below for Seed Daily Symbiotic. At the end of the day, all this good stuff, gut health is probably going to be number one for me. It's still the main thing that I focus on. Without a good gut, nothing else really matters in my opinion. So Seed is a symbiotic, so it has a small capsule inside of a capsule. So it has a prebiotic and a probiotic that have a multi-stage delivery. They've been a sponsor on this channel for years. First started working with them because I used their product. So it's a legit happy relationship there because I use their product and now we've established a business relationship too, which is just great. So that link down below gets you 25% off their daily symbiotic. I'm pretty darn sure you'll feel a noticeable difference within a couple of weeks of taking it. I know myself as well as my wife both notice a huge difference shortly after starting to take it. So link down below in the top line of the description. Let's jump right in the research on spirulina first from fat loss perspective and performance because i know it's like a natural thing so sometimes people are like well it can't be that effective this is one of the more studied ergogenic aids at least in the endurance world because it does so much help with fat utilization there's a study that was published in medicine and science and sports and exercise okay it found that after just a few weeks of using spirulina there was an increase in vo2 max an increase in fatty acid oxidation an increase in glycogen sparing and an increase in time to exhaustion overall just in endurance work. Whoa, so what is this doing? Like, how is this working? Well, for one, there is an increase in the enzyme known as carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, CPT1. So essentially, spirulina is allowing more fat to get into a mitochondria. The problem is, is these studies are done in people that are athletes, particularly in this case. Now, don't get me wrong. There's lots of studies. I've done videos on spirulina for like diabetics and insulin resistance huge properties there. But when we're talking about fat loss and performance, you know, you're getting more fat into a cell, into the mitochondria, but if the mitochondria is broken, then how does this actually work, right? So you've got these complexes in a mitochondria where a proton, where basically an electron travels down through a mitochondria to ultimately create ATP. But if a mitochondria is broken, that channel, those complexes in which an electron from the food that we eat travels down, it doesn't actually complete the whole circuit. And it either makes incomplete energy or it doesn't actually complete energy at all. It doesn't make ATP. This is where the combination with methylene blue could be really interesting because methylene blue is not necessarily helping fuel get into the mitochondria better, but methylene blue is helping the fuel, the electron once it's in the mitochondria, do its job better. So imagine you could get more fat into a cell, more energy initially into a cell, and then methylene blue allows for this reaction, this redox to occur to where methylene blue allows that electron to sort of skip 
the damaged portions of that mitochondria to ultimately produce energy still. So it bypasses the broken parts of the mitochondria. So even though it is technically synthetic and people have their issues with it, for people that are metabolically dysfunctional, it might be what's needed to restore activity in the mitochondria to get them active again to where they then build new mitochondria. So you see, it's a crutch but it's a crutch that works. And it's a crutch that would definitely get people that are maybe having a hard time getting moving in the first place, gets them moving enough to be able to actually develop the real good mitochondria. So very promising there. Now, back to spirulina for a moment. Spirulina also contains phycocyanin, which phycocyanin is an antioxidant that has potential for really cleaning up mitochondrial oxidative stress. This is where it works similarly to methylene blue. Methylene blue, methylene blue in itself is an antioxidant. So now you have two approaches. You have methylene blue coming, that's literally working as an antioxidant. And then you have phycocyanin, which is in the blue-green algae of spirulina itself. And that triggers glutathione and superoxide dismutase to increase increasing your body's natural antioxidant reserves. So then you are actually coming at this oxidative stress from energy production even more powerfully. Take one or the other, take both. It, you know, it, it doesn't make a difference to me. I'm just trying to lay the facts out. But then there was another study that found that spirulina helped clear lactate out faster, which means that from a performance enhancing standpoint, that explains why it increased the time to exhaustion so much. It made it so that people were able to push it further because they were able to clear the lactic acid burn out of their body a little faster. And when it's cleared faster, it's actually turned back into energy because that's complicated. But if you remember sophomore biology class and the Krebs cycle and the pyruvic acid cycle, essentially lactate is converted back into the pyruvic acid scale, uh, cycle and turned into energy, yada, 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 I'm cool, whatever. Point is, is that you're increasing the recycling of energy. Now, from a fat loss perspective, what does this mean for you? It means that one of the reasons you're sparing energy so much is because instead of tapping into carb resources, you're still just utilizing fat. It increases fatty acid oxidation. So you're tilted more towards using fat for fuel. The evidence is showing that about two to three grams is what you'd wanna take prior to a workout. And you'd wanna take it prior to mainly aerobic exercise. Spirulina is not gonna do a whole lot for you with anaerobic high intensity work unless high intensity aerobic type ventilatory threshold work. Otherwise, like resistance training, it's not doing that much for you. So you wanna take like one to three grams prior to a workout that is a little more aerobic where you're using fat predominantly anyway. So it's gonna help the fat get into the cell. Same thing with methylene blue. Methylene blue probably doesn't help you too much with resistance training with the exception of the recovery in between sets. It still helps, but I take methylene blue on the days that I'm doing higher intensity or longer duration cardio. And now I'm combining methylene blue and spirulina for that outcome, right? I don't necessarily have a recommended spirulina source. The methylene blue source I would recommend, and this is not a paid promotion or anything, is I would recommend Troscriptions because they're the only one that I know of that tests for heavy metals and doesn't have a high heavy metal content because most liquid methylene blue on Amazon has very high uh, metal content. You gotta be very careful. And you were talking low dose methylene blue here. I hope that you stuck with me through this video to hear that we're talking low dose. We're not talking high dose. We're talking like four milligram doses of methylene blue because the high doses are reserved for true like interventions when it's needed for septic shock and things like that. So the combination here with spirulina, you're looking one to three grams. And if you want to go high performance on the spirulina, upwards of six to seven grams can be highly effective too, but still keeping it around four to eight grams of the methylene blue. And again, both of them work individually, but they work on different axes. So even though spirulina is blue-green pigment, it's not the blue-green pigment you're getting out of methylene blue, where it turns from methylene blue into leucomethylene blue, which is like the non-actual blue version. It has nothing to do with the pigment with spirulina, but it is very similar in terms of how they work together. So as always, keep it locked for my channel.